So personal preference, or free choice, or internal bias, or possessing one's own agency is bigoted. Shocking, I know. To demonstrate this kind of mentality, I'm going to be responding to a reasonably popular lol cow. So let's go with Riley Dennis, or Justin Dennis, or the holder of the apple that shall not be named. He, she, it, right, has made a few videos claiming that certain types of preference are transphobic, and today is no exception. Now to cover this piece of ubertard, we will be using a piece of fan art originally made for Uzulu by The Forbidden Thinker, channel link below. But let's face it, this looks much better on me. Now I think I've rambled on for quite long enough. Let's get into this. Recently on the internet, there's been a lot of discussion around genital preferences and transphobia. In this video, I'm going to use the word cissexism instead of transphobia, but they're really similar words. If the words are similar or mean the same thing, then why use a separate word entirely? And any talk of personal preference and genitals and transphobia and so on and so on has come from you, the apple that shall not be named your content, and also anyone that you associate with that also makes videos like you. So basically, trans trenders. At its most basic, cissexism means prejudice or discrimination against transgender people. Oh fantastic, another label to identify some form of discrimination that has to be highlighted with its own unique label. Would you, Riley Dennis, feel better if everyone identified as pansexual or omnisexual or something sexual that includes everything sexual? I would ask you this on Twitter, but you blocked me a while ago without me knowing. You're a bit like Shives. So what's been happening is that some people are making the argument that it's not cissexist at all to only be attracted to people with one kind of genital. It is not cissexist, as you say. It is a personal preference. And I am curious as to whether or not a trans person that is only attracted to one type of genitals are are they cis-sexist as well, or are they given a free pass? For example, these people might argue that being attracted to only women with vaginas in no way negatively affects trans people. On the other hand, I would argue that it's more complicated than that. I wonder, Justin Riley, apple that shall not be named, have you ever heard of clutching at straws? Because I think this applies to you. Just because somebody's interested in somebody, and genitals happen to be a factor, doesn't mean they are discriminated against trans people. They are making it abundantly clear they have a preference and an end game. If you need a good example, just look at all the cis relationships. There are quite a lot of them after all. And what is the main motivation to quite a lot of them? Wanting to settle down and have children. Something which, while still possible through adoption, isn't really possible for a trans woman to carry. B-section is not a thing here, you know. We all have our implicit biases built into our preferences, and gender isn't as simple as just the genitals you have. But after I say that, I usually get a bunch of blatantly cis-sexist responses. I don't quite understand why you feel the need to acknowledge word preference, but then dissect it to the point that anyone that has a preference is somehow bigoted to a group. It seems like an over-analysis, because a group is not getting as much booty as the other group. So I thought I'd address all of those responses at once. Yay. Number one, you're being homophobic. In this argument, I often get accused of homophobia, lesbophobia, or lesbian erasure by lesbians who believe that I'm trying to change their sexual orientation or identity. To an extent, those lesbians would have a point. You conflate, you confuse, you mistake gender regularly, and then you call bigot on anyone that challenges you. You are someone that identifies as a trans woman lesbian, even though you're not on hormone therapy, and you have also claimed to be non-binary. I think the lesbians have a point. You kind of devalue what they are by continuing to pretend you're one of them. They say that my language sounds a lot like a dude who tried to turn them straight or like conversion therapy. When I first found your channel and heard you say you were a trans woman lesbian, I actually thought, hmm, I've heard that before, back in the 90s, as a pickup line for other girls that other teenage boys thought that other girls would like to hear. Oh look, I'm a lesbian too, I'll turn you straight. That is what I first thought of you. A pretender. And you continue to prove it. Those responses are rooted in cis-sexism. This is because I'm not telling lesbians that they can't be lesbians. If oh, look at that. You found a use for that fancy little label you introduced earlier. By taking a direct shot at people you'd want to be your ally. 
Congratulations. If you're a woman who only likes women, go ahead, identify as a lesbian. But some women have penises, and if the fact that some lesbians might be attracted to those women offends you, it's because you don't think trans women are real women. I have to ask, because obviously the over-analysis going into this is heavy. Have you been rejected by every other lesbian because you've got a dick? It's blunt, I know, I didn't really want to ask because I'm slightly worried you have a bigger noodle than I do. You certainly have a bigger Adam's apple than I do. That is worrying. But I only ask because you're taking a lot of shots at lesbians. You yourself being a trans lesbian, it makes me wonder if it's because you've been rejected too many times because they've seen your dick and are like, err, no. Also, I have to ask, say you ask one of these lesbians that has rejected you, is it because of my dick? And you call them cis-sexist, and they say, so what? What then? Do you think they're suddenly going to decide to sleep with you? I know it's a weak argument, I know, I just, I don't quite understand why you feel the need to go to such lengths to basically crap on your dating demographic, unless of course there are non-binary lesbians, in which case, wow, the world is your Tumblr oyster. That's because these accusations of homophobia make it sound like I'm trying to convince lesbians to like men, but I'm not. I'm trying to show that preferences for women with vaginas over women with penises might be partially informed by the influence of a cis-sexist society. Cis-sexist society, cis-sexist society, cis-sexist society. Incredibly difficult to say, I promise you. I love that you've gone from blaming lesbians now to feeling sorry for them because it's in fact the rest of the world's fault, the cis-sexist society, as you've called it. It is their fault for conditioning lesbians into only liking other women with vaginas. LOL. You do not have to like men. You do not have to date men or have sex with men. And if you think that's what I'm arguing, you're simultaneously strawmanning my argument and implying that trans women are men. I think it has more to do with the fact that you're the one making the arguments and no one believes you're a trans woman. Number two, you're upholding rape culture. So you're upholding a myth then? This is honestly the worst response that I've heard and probably the most cis-sexist one. That's because trans women have a long history of being accused of being rapists by cis women. Now this is actually very interesting and something if you, Riley Dennis, can provide credible sources for, I would love to read. It's the logic behind bathroom bills that prevent trans women from using the right bathroom. It's why some cis women are terrified of the idea of sharing a locker room with a trans woman. This is a very common tactic used by anti-trans folks to discredit trans women as just men trying to invade women's spaces so they can rape them. While it is a truly terrible argument to make to then justify that particular banning, you seem to be forgetting the number of people who are uncomfortable sharing with trans women. I personally don't care. I never have, never will, but I respect the fact that there are boundaries, and also wish that there was some kind of compromise where everyone was happy, but that's not going to happen, is it? This isn't about an individual. This is not saying you have to have sex with a trans woman or you're cis-sexist. It's saying that you should examine the societal influences on your preferences. There's a massive difference between honing in on individual scenarios and considering wider societal issues and attitudes. You're basically saying that people are not making these educated and informed decisions. They're not examining what they prefer, which is an assumption. You are assuming people haven't done this. I have preferences. I'm fine with it, I've come to terms with it, I accept that no penis is going in me. By your logic, I'm transphobic. Okay, what now? Number three, I'm allowed to have my preferences. Technically, you're right. Technically? You're allowed to have your preferences and you don't have to change anything. Well, thank you kindly, Mistress, Mistress, Apple Tress, Riley, Justin, Apple Dennis. Your permission, your consent is all I ever needed to have my own preference, fucking hell. But there's more to it than that, and ignoring the deeper issues by stopping at a surface level analysis doesn't do this issue any justice. You are assuming yet again that this is all surface level. I'm sure there is something deep inside someone that we're all trying to get to. Starts with G and just spot. Like, you're allowed to have a lot of things. You're allowed to have prejudice towards trans people, but that doesn't mean you should. You do realize that if I played that entire clip, that entire quote from start to finish, it would essentially, and could be, quite easily used to strawman you into saying that just because you have a preference doesn't mean you should have a preference. If you script your videos, I might recommend you get someone to read through them first. 
So if we look a little deeper into this issue, there's the possibility of your genital preferences being at least somewhat partially informed by growing up in a cis-sexist society. I took the liberty while you were speaking to look deep within myself to try and ascertain whether or not I could entertain the idea of taking dick. Nope. There's also the fact that a preference is different than saying you would never do something. This explains the preferences video you made not so long ago where you said that you could totally find so and so attractive. You basically made sure that your bases were covered. Like, having a preference for tall girls is fine, but refusing to date anyone under 5'7 is ridiculous. I don't know many guys who would say that. For the majority of those that I know, it would be the other way around. Tall people being somewhat fetishized in that regard. I personally prefer quite short women. Submissive. And sandwich capable. And obviously that's not a perfect analogy because short girls as a group don't face the societal marginalization that trans women do. <laughs> Show me a peer-reviewed study and I might take it seriously. <laughs> Simply saying, it's my preference, end of discussion, is a good way of sidelining all of those issues and instead centering the feelings of cis people in a discussion that's about trans people. If someone says to you, this is my preference, end of discussion, they're not trying to negate trans issues. They're simply saying, that is my preference, my choice, my preference. It doesn't mean they don't care, you're essentially strawmanning them. Number four, I have a trans friend who says this is okay. People love their tokens. I don't call any of my trans women friends token. They are my cabal of trannies. Hell, I'm in a Discord server filled with trannies. And they're all my friends. Token, cabal, tranny friends. Yes. I've done an entire video on moral licensing and why this is a terrible defense, but in summary, you'll always be able to find trans people to back up your cis-sexist views. There will always be someone, somewhere around the world, that agrees with what you say that may in fact be trans, because not all trans people agree with each other on everything, especially when it comes to you. You are a unique case of fake. Now as this has dragged on for quite a long time, I want to go straight ahead to number five, your fifth point. Number five, I'm triggered by penises because of past sexual trauma. That's completely understandable. I've never said that anyone should have to have sex with someone with a penis if they don't want to. That is true. However, you have made it abundantly clear those that choose not to, those that have not been sexually traumatized, are transphobic. Or cis-sexist, of course. If intimacy with someone who has a penis is triggering for you, I would never suggest that you have to do that. Take your time to heal and work through your trauma at your own pace. Just be aware that the majority of people making the I could never date someone with a penis argument are not doing so because of trauma or triggers. Well, it's nice to know those that have suffered sexual trauma get a free pass from your scorn, judgment, claims of transphobia, and cis-sexism. And the last thing I want to say about this is that if you'd rather not have sex with a woman who has a penis, maybe just don't make such a huge deal of it. Trans women are often afraid of not being found attractive or desirable after coming out, and you're not helping. When it comes to helping, you are the last person that should be offering an opinion. If you really want to be an ally to trans people, you could just not talk about it. And by that, I'm not trying to censor you, okay? So don't pretend this is censorship. I don't think it's censorship because you're the one that brought it up. I am critical of what you think because what you think seems to contradict itself at least twice in this video. You have the freedom to say whatever you want. I'm just asking you to consider if it's necessary to say those things when they reflect harmful or violent rhetoric. Because if you have an opinion that you know is only gonna make people feel bad about themselves, why constantly share it with the world? What I want you to do right now, Riley, is get up, go to the very first mirror you can find, look into it, and repeat those words in that order. It's fine to not find people attractive, but it's mean to constantly yell about how unattractive you find those people, especially when those people are oppressed. Okay. From this day forward, I'll make it a point not to tell people I find non-sandwich wenches very unattractive, along with pineapple pizza lovers, you filthy degenerates. Anyway, thank you all for listening.